Hello and welcome to Witchy Wellness Radio. I'm your host, Lauren Chalantani, women's holistic health coach and fellow recovering perfectionist. This podcast was created to show you that your body is not in the way, it is actually leading your way. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Witchy Wellness Radio. And again, I'm your host, Lauren, and you're listening to episode 63, Honoring Change with Marika Hall. Today's episode is another beautiful lady, another very witchy wellness filled episode where we talk of everything from initiation to ceremonies to acupuncture, how we as humans as spiritual beings living a human experience, can honor that change, can honor things like burnout, things like starting or ending our menstrual cycle in our lifetime as women, and even honoring the loss or honoring the accidents or those big surprises that throw us off guard. I'm so excited for you guys to listen to this episode, but first, if you haven't already, we are now on YouTube and we have full-length video action of every interview, so you get to see the passion, the love, the spirit of it all, and most of the time, me making over-exaggerated, goofy faces. So, if you haven't already, head over to YouTube, hit subscribe, and you get your weekly dose of Witchy Wellness Radio on there as well. Thank you guys so much for listening, and please enjoy episode number 63 Honoring Change with Marika Hall. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Witchy Wellness Radio. And again, I'm your host, Lauren Chalantani, and you get to learn how your body is not in your way, but actually leading your way. And today I'm super excited to talk to our guest, Marika Hall, Reed Hall, Uh, She is a mama, acupuncturist, shamanic healer, holistic doula, ceremony creatrix, who is dedicated to helping people return to self through finding connections with their body, spirit, and the rhythms of nature. Yes, we love this. Her primary work is with those who are navigating changes in their lives due to natural cycles of life and the unexpected accidents, trauma, and burnout. Man, you cover just about everything of life. You you can help us all. Welcome to the show today. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. Yes, me too. And what a beautiful intro that is. And I was just thinking, ah, oh, such a qualified uh, witchy wellness guest here today. Everything that you do, I'm just like, <laughs> feeds my witchy wellness soul. Um, nice. But I, I, I love to hear how people got into this because... Not many of us grew up practicing all of these witchy things and kind of how, how did you get to do the work that you're doing today? Yeah, I'd love to tell you. Um, oh man, well really like it starts at the beginning, right? I grew up out in the country in Alberta in Canada, which is like kind of prairie on the like not too far from the mountains with some super hippie parents. Um, and I spent the first many years of my life just carefree and being able to go and roam out in nature and it was really tapped into everything. And then when I was five, my mother left my father and moved us into the city. And it was like this huge change in my life that at the time I had no idea, but upon later work realized that that like it shut down a part of me and I lost that connection that I had. And so I spent a lot of my youth and teen years really confused about like who I was and self-confidence issues and feeling like I'd lost the magic in the world and went through a real period of like doing a lot of drugs and really treating myself really poorly in order to be able to try and connect with other people, be able to, um, try to find meaning and magic back in life. And so really it wasn't until my twenties when I decided to start traveling and go back to school that all of a sudden that flipped. And I spent many years traveling and studying um, 
And it really, it allowed me to see that there's so many other ways of experiencing the world. And it was probably my first job. Well, not my very first job, but it was my first most meaningful job when I was in university. I worked at this little aromatherapy store called Sage and I had this boss there and she was a magnificently witchy woman and she like rocked my world and it just changed. I worked with all these incredible women and suddenly I was like, oh my God, this is it. Like, this is what I want in my life. And so I went on to study amazing things. I initially actually wanted to be a doctor and go and work overseas. And it was part of my passion with travel. And then I um, recognized that that, again, it just didn't, it didn't encompass all of those pieces for me. So I went on to do some uh, medical anthropology and again, looking at how different cultures view and feel about health and illness and disease which led me into birth work after living in these countries like Tanzania and India where people, uh, it was a village, right? And these kids all took care of each other and the women took care of all the kids. And um, I recognized that I really like, I missed that. And so I wanted to offer that. So I got into doula work and then that expanded into Chinese medicine. One of my teachers in my doula program was a Chinese medical practitioner and she taught us acupressure and it, just totally opened my eyes to mm, the interconnection of everything. Chinese medicine, similar to my shamanic background, which I studied when I did my doula work, you know, everything's connected. Our environments affect us. Our relationships affect us. What we put into our body affects us. And so it just spoke to me of this way of being able to re-tap into that connection. And so all of these tools and all these experiences have allowed me to find that connection back into spirit and be able to find that piece that I lost when I was a little girl. Yeah. And I think for me, it's, it's connecting back with that little girl and finding things I used to love. And it does not have to be a complicated process. No, for me, I can get looped up of like, what morning routine do I need to do or ritual? And it can be as easy. And people don't realize if I love dancing around the house and just putting on whatever music and just, I don't care who's watching, just move. However, my body feels like she needs to move because as a kid, I love to dance. I would dance all over the house. In fact, when um, Material Girl came out by Madonna, I was convinced it was Cheerio Girl, like convinced a hundred percent. Cause like my little kid mind was like, she's talking about Cheerios. I understand, you know? So anyway, sidetrack a little bit there, but you know, the beautiful, I, I love balancing it with beautiful practices. Like you have like acupuncture and doula work. Whoa. If we want to talk about a beautiful subject right there, it's, you know, helping a woman not only birth a life, but rebirth herself. I think people (laughs) don't realize that. I'm sure you can talk a little bit about that. It's just, it's much more than what we perceive in this Western society. Oh my God. It's so incredible. The process that we go through in birthing. I have a two-year-old, which is just over two. And I've been to, um, you know, several births and had lots of friends who've had babies. And um, there's, there's just so many pieces to it. It's such a rich opportunity, like any initiation in our life, whether it's like menstruation or menopause or getting married or getting divorced or somebody dying. Any of them are just these opportunities to be cracked open and to transform into such a different, well, not a different person, but just to open ourselves more completely and find this greater aspect of ourselves. And certainly like, you know, the nine months, 10 moon lunar months of pregnancy, each little month in Chinese medicine, each month is associated with these different pieces. And each one gives us this opportunity to kind of nourish ourselves and deepen into, um, connecting with this growing fetus but preparing ourselves for this birth this like momentous occasion that we get to go through 
And unfortunately, yeah, in our culture, there's a lot of pieces around, um, you know, medicalization and, um, you know, all these things of like birth is a disease or, you know, there's this real lack of spirit within it. And yet, like, there's very few initiations like this in life. And really even like birth is only like this tiny piece because once you have that little baby and you've just gone through this marathon of birthing this person and now you have to recover and you have to connect with this being and, um, oh, it's so powerful. There's like, there's just so much that you can get out of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I love you were touching on initiations and I would love to kind of start there because we sometimes look at life very linear. And I think the circular kind of view tied in with initiations kind of is a different perspective on life, but also time. And mm-hmm. you touched a little bit on them. And what beautiful timing. I mean, it's just <laughs> speaking of time. <laughs> Um, can, could you kind of talk to us, you know, what, what do initiations really mean? How, you know, dive deep, deeper into why it's important to us and, and how to connect deeper to ourselves and spirit. Yeah, oh, I would love to. Um, oh, there's so many pieces to it. So really, I feel like an initiation is in my shamanic training, we talked about, about a bid for power. And so it's really any time when we decide in our lives that we want to expand ourselves. And so sometimes we have the choice to do that, like choosing to have a baby or choosing to get married. And sometimes we don't have the choice to do that. And spirit's like, all right, you're, you're going to have this and you need to go through it. And, you know, it's something that just completely sends our world into a whirlwind and topsy turvy. and it allows us to really, to expand our container, to grow our container, to prove that we are truly the magnificent beings that we are. And of course it's all part of our like soul development as well, because I personally believe in uh, reincarnation and that we are all, you know, incarnated as aspects of spirit. And then we move through these lifetimes slowly evolving. And so each of these initiations allow us to grow a little bit closer back to spirit um and in chinese medicine there's a really neat thing where we go into um there's these cycles so that women have seven year cycles and men have eight year cycles and in uh yoga they talk a lot about seven year cycles too but so every seven years that we go through these cycles um we hit another initiation and it's it's manifest in our body um so at seven we kind of step into really like no longer infancy no longer toddlerhood but into childhood at 14 of course we start menstruating and we hit puberty at 21 we become a little bit more developed a little bit more like conscious in our minds and then 28 of course is the big one our saturn return where we like take all that stuff that we've learned in those first 20 years and like, be like, is this mine? Is this not mine? Um, where am I at? You know, what's my truth. And then by 35, we kind of hit that piece of, we know what our truth is and then we can develop more into that. And so those are kind of examples of ones that we don't really have control over. We all have to go through them. Right. Unlike the ones that we choose first and, um, marriage and all of those kinds. Yeah, I know people, people kind of refer to the Saturn return as like quarter life crisis. And (laughs) it's just, but it it is, I I think a lot of people, all the things come up and whether you're getting married, you're getting divorced, you're having a family career change, like around that time, I've noticed a lot of people there's big life changes and it's a huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that's what started to wake me up at a deeper level. I was like, Whoa, how did I get here? Oh yeah. My spirit made me go through this in order to really realize deeper level who I am. Don't wish it upon anybody else, 
but thank you, like keep moving forward and, and, and process of course and move through everything. But people sometimes use that as an, an excuse to, you know, I, I love astrology, but I see a lot of people say like, you know, letting certain things dictate how they're, they're going to, going to behave, you know, and it's, yeah. it's so much more than what your monthly or daily astrology thing is. Like if you don't have oh, your yeah. chart read, like you don't know anything, but yeah. Saturn <laughs> returns a big thing for people. And um, yeah, I've noticed, you know, late twenties, a lot of, a lot of people go through those shifts that either cho- chosen or not. Um, uh-huh that really ha- are an opportunity for us to to wake up and return to a deeper level of ourselves. And that's like the root of what I try to show and help inspire people is, oh. you know, there's going to be a mountain behind every mountain. Like yeah. there's, there's, <laughs> there's always going to be something going on. And, but it's always this opportunity to, to, I like to think of it as like the greater the the challenge is like the slingshot. It could have a potential oh. to push you further or deeper into who you really are. And it's not that it's this better version of you. For me, I look at it as this like clarity thing. I feel a deeper yeah. clarity of who I really am, what I stand for. And like you're naturally just have this love and passion for life itself. And yeah, I just mm-hmm. yes. So yeah. yeah, Saturn gets such a bad rap a lot. It really like it's like oh you know it's it's gonna drive you down and it's responsibility and it's gonna like make you pay for your things. But really, like it's the ultimate in our own growth. And what I really see the Saturn returns. So they happen every like twenty eight thirty years. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, um, they act as these like they're probably some of the most momentous, you know, non-chosen initiations in our lifetime. And that first one is really interesting. I work with a lot of people who are kind of going through that first one. I find that's often when they find me because a lot of mental health stuff will show up at that period in time and a lot of psycho-spiritual crisis. And like in looking at some of the stats and stuff, like it's also one of the highest rates of um, suicide during that period of time because people really are confronted with this reality that they've been brought up in and their culture and their upraise their upbringing <laughs> and where they've come from. And if we can move through that piece and if we work with Saturn and we take that time to really move slowly and lay each little brick and go through each piece and identify what's ours or not, then it really sets us up for that next phase. Like I like to think of it is that first phase of kind of the maiden and then the next phase is that like mother, that like queen. And then at like 60-ish, we go through the next one. And if we've done our work in that first one, then the one we go through in our 60s is so much gentler. And we can move through from that air piece of mother or queen into that like wise elder. And it, you know, with each initiation that we go through in life, the following one in some ways is a little bit easier. It can seem momentous at the time, but really we've gathered a little bit more tools every time we go through them. Yeah. And, and especially working with someone like yourself is that's going to hold the space and set you up with a perspective, but the tools to help you work through and reorganize what's going on now, but things you can implement for the rest of your life. And totally. what you mentioned about like turning from the mother to, I'm assuming, what is it? Maiden, mother, Crone. Usually. Crone. I was say crone. Was yeah. what I was gonna say um, a transition is usually menopause, and mm-hmm. that has such a bad cultural rep. Like it's uh, going to be horrible, and these things are normal and prescription. Da 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 da. da. That yeah. and birth, which I'm sure you can speak to. I have read and and talked to so many beautiful people who do the work like you do. That when you're able to deal with your own ish coming up like through these Saturn returns and these initiations, those transitions mm-hmm. like birth and menopause have the potential to be a positive experience and not this gloom and doom, painful, 
your body's attacking you kind of experience. Absolutely. Well, I think it's very much, you know, your, your tagline that your body's not in the way, but it is the way. And if we, cause there's so many pieces about like cultural perception and the ideas that menopause can be bad or that, you know, menstruation is painful or birth is painful or all these things will affect us. But if we can take the time to gather those tools to listen to our bodies and move through those pieces, it makes it so much easier. And we gather more and more from it because it's like hormones are fascinating. When I was young, when I first was studying, um, biology was like my favorite subject in high school. I loved it. And it was part of that piece that made me want to become a doctor. And I really was fascinated by endocrinology and how the endocrine system works. And the way that hormones affect us and how interlinked hormones and emotions are. And it was actually in birthing my daughter and having that really fresh in my mind and going through pregnancy and going through those hormone fluctuations. It really reminded me how powerful these times are in our lives and how it's, it's normal sometimes to feel like you're going crazy. And I feel for those teenagers who aren't given that information when they're coming into puberty, right? That they don't know that like it's okay and it's normal and that there's things that we can do to move through that. And same when, you know, if you've moved through your, your puberty in a rough way and not weren't supported and maybe your births were rough and they weren't supported, and you come along to menopause and then like, of course, it's going to be challenging because again, you're going to feel like you're crazy and you're, you've never put together or you've never been helped in realizing that this is natural and that there's things that we can do to like smooth the hormones and smooth the emotions and smooth the transition. Yeah, you know, the mind body connection fascinates me so much. And like what you just kind of talked about is we have the ability. Everybody does. No one's too special not to have this ability to actually change our genes and our hormonal expression through epigenetics, which is this newer research. Um, I started reading Bruce Lipton a while ago and I was Mm. like blown away that we talk about it. People are probably like, yeah, Lauren, we know what epigenetics is because I talk about it almost every episode. I'm sorry, guys. (laughs) I just, it's it's mind blowing. Um, But for those who have not listened to another episode, it's, it's, it's studying that you know, there's always this nature nurture argument and that change evolutionarily speaking doesn't happen for thousands and thousands of generations. But the Mm -hmm. science of epigenetics shows us that we are able to change our gene expression now, this lifetime. Yeah. And the work that you do is going to affect generations to come. And it's so beautiful. There was just article that I read a few months ago in in Nature, the science publication Nature, that they were actually able to track the genetic markers for this uh, emotional event up to like seven or 10 generations down. Um, So, you know, something traumatic, evolutionarily speaking, is going to be passed down in your genetics. But on the other side of that coin, when you heal and show up for yourself, you could you could upregulate that instantly, and for me, it's like science has always like been interesting. But in the past few thousand years, we've connected that spirit connection from science. Like they're two different things. Like we're not even going to look at each other. But epigenetics mm-hmm. for me is like look how powerful we actually are, and and the work that you do helps kind of ground people to be able to, like you said, smooth, smooth out those hard edges in, in process and work through. And you're actually changing your genes when you're mm-hmm. doing that and reprogramming your mind, which I think is so powerful. And I can nerd out about all day long. <laughs> oh my God. I love epigenetics. It's such a fascinating topic. And there's pieces from both shamanism and Chinese medicine that like weave into it so so closely, like, you know, as you said, like the science is catching up to the things that they've known for such a long time. Um, in Chinese medicine, we talk about our Jing 
And so our Jing is, it's like our, it's like our genes. It's what our parents give us. And it's, um, it's held in our kidneys and we have a limited amount of it. And it's actually what regulates those seven and eight year cycles that I was talking about. And so, um, the, mo- it's, so there's like, there's so many pieces that go into it. So first of all, it's like the state that both parents are in at the moment that they choose to conceive will affect that. So all those ancestral pieces that they're of course bringing forward, also their like emotions and their physical health at that moment. And then environmentally as well, like what's going on? Is it in the middle of a war? Is it in the middle of a pandemic? Is it, you know, what are these different things that affect it? And then of course the mother's pregnancy as well will also affect our Jing. The, so, you know, how nourished she is or not, how her emotional temperament is, that's the piece with the Chinese um, where we look at each month and there's all these different protocols that you're supposed to follow each month in order to be able to nourish the Jing fully. And then, you know, saying that, you know, you had good Jing from your ancestors and your parents conceived well and your mother took good care of herself in her pregnancy, then you're born with this abundant Jing. And it makes it easier to move through those cycles. But it also um, we also have control over it too, because when we go out and do certain things in our lifetimes, we can waste more of that jing. So if we do, you know, spend a lot of time working out too much or like really taxing our bodies or doing a lot of drugs or drinking a lot or being in a lot of drama, it will tax our jing more and we will come through, come up to more issues along the way because of that. Um, so yeah, it's neat. They, they, they kind of weave together. Yeah, it's beautiful. We're, it's finally catching up. Um, but yeah. like what you just said, adding on to that, um, you know, if you truly, your body is leading your way, is my belief. And that's why I started the show is that whatever's happening in your life or how your body's reacting or you mm-hmm. not acting the way that you think it should be, is this opportunity for you to be like, hmm, what do I need to change? What am I doing Am, am I taxing myself too much? What, what are, what's my spirit or life trying to reflect at me, this big mirror that is just kind of like a, my intuition going like, hello, you know, time, time, time to wake up a little bit. And, mm-hmm. and even, like you said, I love the Chinese medicine um, example of even if you're not born in this perfect situation, you have, you can be empowered and, change the way that you approach life and approach these these transitions um yeah that's what that's what i'm all about i love being able to, to tell people we we have the choice we are empowered and we're so much more powerful than we think we are um mm-hmm. but when we're going through these changes or the unexpected like you said accidents and trauma and and burnout you don't necessarily feel like that all the time, even though you might know that. And, you know, that that's how someone like yourself and the beautiful work that you do helps support people. So yeah. I would love for you to kind of walk through, I'm sure it changes based on their client and how, you know, what's going on in their life, how you help hold that space and work somebody, with somebody who, who needs your help. Mm, yeah. It definitely varies depending on the person and who is coming to me. And it's interesting because different people will come to me kind of for different things. Like I'll offer, you know, kind of shamanic separately and I'll offer acupuncture separately and I'll offer birth work separately. And so, you know, I'll get people who come in for an acupuncture through the acupuncture stream, right? And, you know, it might be for um, menstrual issues or for pain or things like that. And it's more uh medical right they've come into it on that level but like i view it that there's like these deeper connections of course right and so when they when they come in um and when i'm working with someone like that like i i work gently at it right and so um i bring in you know all of the resources and information that i have in order to be able to assist them in moving forward with that and so usually you know, I'll do like a full intake of them and, 
you know, figure out, ask them all the different questions and put together all the links. Cause a lot of people don't really realize that like the fact that they're, you know, maybe waking up in the middle of the night with night sweats or the fact that they like are maybe not breathing as deep as they thought or like a piece of their foot's hurting or there's all these little pieces that people just don't correlate that are connected in their bodies because it's not the way that we're trained about it. So I kind of look through those pieces and weave all those together and then I do, I'll go through and I'll do like an energetic assessment of their body and then a physical like touch assessment just to see on two, on, you know, on kind of two levels, first looking at the meridians and how are the meridians flowing or not flowing by reading the pulse and uh, doing some palpation along the channels and feeling where things might be blocked or not. And then energetically, I'll also bring in the shamanic pieces. So I'll kind of look at it um, along the chakras and kind of feel more of their energy field. Um, and of course, they're all connected. It's there's just kind of like different layers that I can choose to look at it through. Um, and then, um, and then I create kind of a protocol for them. And so usually my treatments, my in-person or even my, like I'm doing remote treatments right now, cause we can't, I can't see people face to face. Um, you know, usually I'll incorporate some acupuncture to balance out the channels and then I'll do a shamanic healing on top of that. And so that can involve, singing to them it can involve a drum journey if they've had some kind of trauma or accident where maybe a piece of themselves was left in that space working on bringing that piece back into them um and working on ultimately the goal is to kind of bring back mind body spirit all together in one and then after whatever energy needs to be cleared cleared out um, whether it's an emotion or a feeling or stuck energy or whatever, getting all the chi moving properly, then filling them back up. So like clear, emptying them and then like filling them back up. And then usually I'll give them some homework. It could be working with like essential oils or ear seeds, um, which are kind of like portable little seeds you can do for acupuncture yourself. Um, flower essences and make my own flower essences to kind of give people these tools to continue to work on with acupressure. Um, and then, yeah, just getting them to kind of contemplate things in their lives, right. Asking them those questions to dig a little deeper and to be like, what is your body telling you? Why do you think that this is happening to you? Um, and usually I find even if somebody's come in, you know, with, a shoulder injury and it's pretty straightforward or ever usually after treatment and after they've kind of had that moment to realign and have chi flowing then usually they can come up with something or notice something they'll be like oh yeah you know like actually I was really stressed out and I was carrying a lot and I was carrying the burdens of my family and then I wasn't paying attention and I hurt my shoulder like it wasn't just me like you know playing too hard at basketball or falling and tripping or whatever it might have been um so yeah that's kind of a little bit about that and then you know birth work of course looks a little bit different than that like there's of course aspects and pieces of that that I work with um again kind of asking them the deeper questions guiding them through those 10 linear months of how to um work with each of the levels and each of the organs to nourish that jing, to nourish the intention of creating the baby. Um, and then working through a lot of the fears and mm, create, you know, creating that plan of what you want for birth, but then letting it go and being like neutral about what happens. And I have a big belief that like babies choose to come in the way that they want to come in to like create the karma that they need in this lifetime. And so, you know, a lot of moms beat themselves up about, you know, wanting a home birth and ending up in a cesarean. But I often remind them that, like, there's a greater piece there that, like, this needed to happen, that this child needed this way to be born into the world. Um, yeah. So many layers Beautiful. of things. No. <laughs> yeah. And I love, I, but I, like we said, it's all so interconnected, um, mm -hmm. you know, just not one thing it's like weaving them all together and, and I'm sure they overlap um oh yeah but someone who you know it's kind of shut down quarantine right now while we're recording this but maybe yeah. somebody who's not nearby who would like to work with you either 
as a, as a doula or just, you know, life doula really helping through transitions Mm -hmm. (laughs) and initiations. Um, how, how does somebody work with you? Do you offer all your services like online as well? Yeah. So I do a bunch of stuff. I do do uh, remote shamanic healings just by themselves, just the shamanic piece, um, which are half an hour. And it's a great, like easy way to kind of like, um, get to know what I'm about and experience my healings. And then I do do the full, I call it my remote wellness sessions. And so it's, um, doing the shamanic healing, doing the full assessment, and then giving you like a treatment plan afterwards. So diet therapy, um, you know, I might send you some moxa or some ear seeds, um, you know, recommend aromatherapy or flower essences or things like that to work on to maintain it. And then doula work. Um, I am doing a little bit of doula work here. Um, we, you know, again, it's kind of for home births because with home births here, we're still allowed to go in the hospital. You can only bring one person. Um, but you know, I'm definitely more than happy to like chat with somebody about kind of their birth plan and helping them prepare. Um, because I do have to go into hospital, whether it be just with their partner, I offer acupressure and like classes on like tools that I can do through zoom. Um, to help couples get ready for that momentous occasion. Ready or not, here comes the baby. Yeah. (laughs) However they want to come, as you said. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I would love to, so what are your like bio descriptions of what you do as a ceremony creatrix? Creatrix. Mm. Explain to all of us who might not know what those words may mean. Oh yeah. I haven't even touched on that. So, yeah. <laughs> um, creatrix, I, I don't know. I made it up. Maybe it's already in, the, in existence, but somebody who creates ceremonies. And so this is another kind of piece of what I love to do is helping create ceremony around these initiations that we go through. And so I do, um, different ones, um, depending on what it is, you know, one of my, the ones I typically do is a mother blessing. And so unlike kind of the more typical, um, baby shower, it's where a mother comes together with all of her women and they nourish and love on her. And it's an opportunity for her as well as the other women there to release fears that they might have and ideas that they have around birth and what it means to birth and be a mother and then to love on her and nourish her and, you know, paint her belly and give her foot baths and share the wisdom of, of the group of the other women who birthed there. And then just creating a circle of support for her. And so one of the things I really love to do that I always recommend people are doing that is that every woman there is given a candle and we all bless those candles. And then when the woman goes into labor, um, typically it's me in that situation, but it could be anybody, right? Whoever's going to be close with her and know that she's in labor sends a message out to all of those women and they light their candle and they send those healing vibes and they let that candle remain lit for that whole time that she's laboring. And just giving her that extra energetic support, um, especially at this time when a lot of women are finding that they are, you know, having to go alone into hospitals or, you know, only allowed to have their mother or one person with them to support them. Um, So yeah, I do that. And then also just around life kind of things, right? So it could be that you're getting married. It could be for uh, puberty. It could be for menopause. I've done one that was really fun, which was a business birth blessing. Uh, And so a woman was starting a business and she felt like she had been like birthing this, you know, she, you know, she was a deep believer that this was like an entity that she was like bringing into the world, which I really believe is so true of business. Um, And so I helped her create like a mother blessing, but it was for her business. And so again, she gathered up her friends and the different people who are going to be working in It was a clinic yoga studio. She brought in the yoga teachers and the different people working there. Um, And we did the same thing, right? We released the fears and we called in the spirits to help 
bring abundance and finances and the right people to like come into the space. And it was a super fun and amazing. It was really cool. Um, yeah. So really just helping anybody honor and create ceremony for, and you know, I'll facilitate them, but I'll also just help somebody kind of run through their ideas and what they want to create and help them kind of create a structure that then they can, you know, go and do on their own. Oh, I love all those examples because it just, rituals for me in ceremonies take the everyday, or not every day, but the mundane and make it more sacred and you are forced to be present and really mm-hmm. feel that energy shifting and at a deeper level, what these transitions really mean. And uh, I love that I love the business one. You might have to think of something for witchy wellness as well, since we are witchy wellness, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it allows you to create such intention with whatever you're yeah. doing. Right. And I was yeah. checking out your checklist that you're working on mm-hmm. or that you have on your website yeah. right now. Right. And so like setting that intention for our day and creating those little rituals that allow us to really consciously create the lives that we want. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think that, that ding was so a sign, everybody listening, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, just as birth, but every day it's usually going to go on, on unexpected. Something's going to pop up, but it's the intention. I find that focus that no matter what's going to happen, I let go of the outcome, but like, how can I re pivot myself and my perspective to feel whatever the intention is more grounded, centered um, in my heart space um, in love with life, you know, the list goes on, whatever feel good feeling is for you and it can change, but learning how to incorporate those intentions throughout the day and through these big life changes, I think is, is super healing. And it's just these little, mm-hmm. it's just, it's all about emotions, I guess, at the end of the day, it's refocusing on how do we want to feel and less focusing on how do we don't want to feel. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It's so powerful to, you know, be in, in conscious choice about our lives. We all, have that choice. I know you hear it and stuff, but it's really, I think it's one of the most important things to remember is that like shit happens and we always have a choice how we react to it. And all within, you know, the caveat of like within the realms of what we understand and we always have more tools to grow and more lessons to learn and more things to accumulate, to be able to like be an even greater choice but we still, we still have that choice. We still have the choice to put a smile on our face or shake it off or whatever it is that we need to yeah, move forward. I always think of like, not fake it till you make it, but who do I need to be right now to show up? Or, you know, we always think of the end goal of having the baby or finding the love of your life or whatever, but it's, mm that person who has these things or, you know, feeling that way, how can we incorporate those feelings and be that person right now is Mm -hmm. very healing and very, very empowering as well. Yeah, it totally is. It's so important. And on that note, I would love to kind of wrap things up. We covered a lot today, but is there anything, (laughs) which I love, um, is there anything else you wanted to cover or talk about before we wrap up the show? Oh, I think that's really it. Yeah, like, you know, there's always more things, but I think that was such a juicy example of the many things that I really love. And I really hope that everybody enjoyed it. And, um, you know, is now going to like think a little deeper about, you know, the choices we make, the initiations we go through, how you can honor them with ceremony. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And in terms of gratitude, I know I am so grateful for you and coming on the show today and showing up for all of us, but yourself, because if you didn't show up for yourself and explored what excited you, you, you know, we wouldn't 
be here talking today. And I always love to kind of point that out because you never know where life's going to take you and where that one step of leading with your heart and just following what, you know, your passion is. You never know how life's going to unfold. And um, with that token, I am so grateful and thank you for your presence today and your beautiful deep wisdom you shared with all of us. And I always ask us at the end of each episode, how may we, the listeners, be of service as an act of gratitude for you in return? Mm. Oh, well, uh, well, there's two things. I would love it. I just started the YouTube channel. And so I welcome everybody to come and check it out. And there's lots of great videos there for you to like work with some of these practices and tools to help yourself, you know, in these times we're living in. And yeah, I guess that piece really about like thinking about how you can make that conscious choice in your life. You know, how can you add those little rituals, those little things to nourish yourself into your life? And whether it's, you know, taking five minutes to breathe deeply, you know, taking a bath, going outside with your bare feet on the grass, whatever it is that you need to just come back to yourself. Right? Yeah, please do that. Mm-hmm. So beautiful. Yeah. Never underestimate some, some nature and fresh air. That's mm-hmm. super powerful. It's so powerful. Well, thank you again for coming on the show today. I know all of our witchy wellness listeners, I'm sure, ate all this juicy, witchy information up. Yeah, thank you all so much. This has been super fun. And remember, open up, surrender, trust, and let your body lead the way.